So let's get into a little bit more detail on the process of transcription. And again, transcription is going to be where you are producing RNA, specifically an mRNA, from DNA. And what's going to happen, this mRNA is going to be formed, the sequence of bases is going to be complementary to the DNA template strand. There's going to be an RNA polymerase, it's going to join these nucleotides together. As always, we're going in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. We're going to talk a little bit more about what is a promoter. Well, a promoter is going to define the start of a gene. Not only does it define the start, it also is going to define which direction it's going to go and which strand is going to be transcribed. Remember, both strands are 5' prime to 3' prime in one of their directions. So depending on which strand that this RNA polymerase complex will sit down on, will determine which way that it's going to be transcribed. Once it's begun, this transcription elongation is going to continue until that polymerase will come to a termination sequence. So what we can see here is this process happening. And what you have is this inactive DNA strand and your DNA template strand. It's moving in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, so this part right here is going to be unwinding. After the transcription happens, the DNA is going to be pretty quickly rewound back together. You can see here in red is the RNA polymerase. And what's going to happen is it's going to take bases and it's going to bind them and add them onto this growing strand. And what we can see here is wherever you have a T, the A is going to bind. If there's a G in the template, a C would bind. Now down here an A, again you have to have a U, not a T binding, because there is no T in thymine. It has to be, excuse me, there is no thymine in RNA. It has to be a uracil instead. And as this would move forward, this T would bind to an A, this C would bind to a G, this G would bind to a C, and so on. So let's talk more about this RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is going to direct the synthesis of RNA using that DNA template. It is similar in many ways to the DNA polymerase. However, unlike the DNA polymerase for, for replication, this RNA polymerase does not require a primer. And this enzyme happens to use the ribonucleotides instead of the deoxyribonucleotides, or the RNA nucleotides, right, instead of the DNA nucleotides. It has several different subunits, and these subunits all have a critical role. So at the beginning of transcription, RNA polymerase is going to bind to the promoter. And I should just point out, this is what is happening in E. coli or a typical bacteria. We're going to talk about what happens in eukaryotic cells a little bit later. We have a sigma subunit that is going to be responsible for promoter recognition. Um, and at this point, it's going to initiate transcription. So everything is going to come together, it's going to bind, it's going to recognize where is the start, and so the transcription can begin. And to see what this would look like, here you have your gene, here's just some DNA, maybe not part of that gene, here's your promoter region. The hollow enzyme is going to sit down around this promoter region. It's going, if you look to zoom in here, the two strands are going to be separated, the, part, the template strand versus the partner strand, which is not participating really at all in this reaction. And you have your RNA that is going to be forming on here. It is going to drop off the back end here, and as RNA polymerase is going to move along, more and more of this will be unzipped, and this strand will grow. Uh, as it does so, this will again rewind, and this is going to disassociate from that DNA. The sigma also is going to dissociate as this elongation is happening. Once everything's assembled, it's really not important for it to be there anymore. And then this polymerase is going to, RNA polymerase is going to travel along the gene in this direction. Again, 5' prime to 3' prime direction for creating this growing transcript. So the beginning of transcription is going to start at what we're going to call the transcriptional start site, or TSS is how you'll often see it abbreviated when you're looking at different genes. This is where the DNA double helix is unwound. This is exactly where the transcription will begin. If you have a transcript, it's always going to start with an AUG, and that is going to be a methionine. Upstream of that, it's going to have two consensus sequences, at least an E. coli. This TTGACA, -A, and a, we call it a TATA box, T-A-T-A-A-T. -A -A -T. Some people call it a Pribno box. They have a very specific location in a very specific sequence. 
The first is at minus 35 to wherever transcription is going to start, so 35 bases upstream. And the second one is going to be 10 bases upstream of wherever transcription should start. If you have any mutations of either of these, either in location or of these bases, your you may still get transcription, but the rate is probably going to be quite a bit lower. And the reason for this is because the RNA polymerase can no longer find where to start. So after that, transcription will proceed. That enzyme, that RNA polymerase, is going to traverse or go down the entire gene until it reaches a termination nucleotide sequence. In bacteria, this termination is transcribed into the RNA itself, and it causes that newly formed transcript to fold back on itself. And so it forms this basically this little hairpin structure. This hairpin structure is held together by hydrogen bonds. In some cases, termination actually depends on a row termination factor.